Reading scale questions have a lot of flexibility. Let's take a look at the options. For our meeting follow-up survey, we want to find out how each of our attendees rated the following aspects of the meeting. So we have date and time. We can add additional rows to include potentially location. And let's add food too. And let's start over here and add our labels. We can add excellent, okay, neutral, not great, and poor. And then let's take a look at our options. If we wanted to, this is a one to five scale. If we wanted to add additional, we could make it a one to 10 scale and have people rate from one to 10. Or if we only wanted an even number, an odd number, we just add the number of points we want on our scale. We can also transpose the scale or flip the scale so that the larger numbers are on the left. As far as the labels go, we have the option of keeping all of the labels as I've done, or we can keep all the labels, or we can just do a high and a low point. So in this case, it would be poor ranging to excellent, or we can include a midpoint where we had neutral. Additionally, if in your answer options, if the aspects that you want rated are long sentences, you can check the box for use long prompts versus just a short field on the left. But in this case, our aspects are quite short, so we don't need the long prompt. In certain scenarios, you don't want to display the numbers. And if you choose to hide your numbers, you just check the box and the numbers disappear. Unselect the box and the numbers reappear. You also have the option, pro and premium subscribers, to randomize your answer options. And here you can include a non-applicable column, make the question mandatory, or include a comments box as to why the respondent provided that rating. A quick tip when you're using rating scales throughout your survey, make sure you keep them consistent. If you don't, it causes confusion for the survey taker. As you can see, there are a lot of options associated with the rating scale question.